So time to enhance the example from the last video where we are able to change the text of our home link here by adding an input field and allowing the user to do this. And for that, I will even implement two-way binding, which yes, we can do in React.js too, even though it's not the default. So I'll go to my home component and then I'll add an input field here next to my button. This should be text. And then I want to have two things happen. The first thing is I want to show the initial value. So, or the current value of the um, name of the uh, link. So initially it should be home and then it should stay to whatever we changed it to. The second thing I want to achieve is that I want to, well, add an event listener, which fetches all the changes the user makes and stores them so that we are able to submit the changes whenever we click this button. Let's start with the first thing, outputting the value of the, well, the current text of the link. I need to pass this value from my index component, therefore, from my app component, excuse me. Here, I only pass the change link reference to my on change link name method, but I also should pass the initial link name like that. And that of course is just this state home link, this here. That's the initial value and that is the value of whatever we change it to later on. So we're passing this as props and I'm passing this as props to my home component. And then this input, I can then bind the value property here oops, not after the slash though, here value, should be this props initial age. Well, we'll see if that works the way we want it to work. Important when binding to value, which of course is kind of a built-in property of the input here, we have to use the curly braces because, well, I want to, well, as you learned it before, I want to reference something from my JavaScript class here, the props in this case. So if I save this, we see 27 here, that does not look right. Initial age is probably wrong. It should be, what did I call it? I called it initial link name and I'm not getting IDE support because I didn't add it to my prop types here. That of course should get added and it should be a string like that. With that, if I save this, we see home looks much better. And if I type here, well, you will realize that you can type as much as you want. Nothing will happen. You can't change this goddamn value. Why is that? Well, let's up open the developer tools and we already see a warning which warns us about this behavior, but I'm ignoring it for now. I'm going to rendering an able paint flashing and then I'm typing. And as you can see, it's constantly flashing here. It's constantly updating this. And now let's have a look at this warning. It tells me that I'm using the value property on a form field, but I don't have the on change handler. This will render a read only field. And the reason for this is that it will constantly update the value, but it doesn't listen to any changes I make. So I have one way binding to a form field which is kind of bad because I'm ignoring the user input with that. So I would either have to delete the value here or set up two-way binding by adding the on change listener, which means do something whenever the input field changes or put in other word when the user types something in there. So upon on change, I want to call the on handle change method here, for example, and I will get the event passed to that all these event handlers here always pass the default JavaScript event object. So here I will then execute or I will bind on handle change without parentheses. But since I will need the, this keyword, I will also bring it on a new line and then I use the ES6 syntax to don't have to write bind this. So on handle change and then pass the event which I get passed automatically by JavaScript or by React.js. So the event object is always available when executing events like this.
So now I'm calling this on handle change with the event being passed to it. And then here I can call this set state and change the state. And of course I want to change the state of my home link property here, which should now be event target value. The event target of course is the input field and the value as well, the current value of it. With that, I can go back and nothing changed. Well, that is not really the result we wanted, is it? Well, nothing changed because here we're binding to this props initial link name, but in the on change handler, we're changing the state. So I should probably bind to this state home link. Now, if I save this, it's called changed link. Now I can change it finally, but it's not reflecting the currently select or yeah, selected text, which is displayed in the header. Well, the reason for that of course is that home link is set to changed link initially. I can set it to this props initial link name and remove this just props. I do pass them in the constructor or I do get them passed into the constructor automatically. Now we see home and now if I change this to changed and click on this button, we see that we put change there. Now if I put it to change to that, it works, change it to home again, it works. So with that, we added quite another important bit to our application two-way binding and you saw why it is important in this case here if we want to display the default value of our header text and we finished this cross components communication example where you saw how to change the state in another component from another component so have two components work with each other and in this case even to then change something in a third component the header component in this case so with that, you should have an overview over how you can use React to work with all your components, pass data, use events, use props, use state. And maybe you already got the impression that this can lead to some problems if you have multiple components, multiple components who want to talk to each other, maybe even sibling components nested over multiple layers of components where you then have to build kind of a props chain to get the link from one component to the other component. And that really can lead to problems in bigger projects which is why we'll have a look at Redux, which helps us solve this problem in an entirely new series coming up on this channel. Or maybe already available when you look, watch this video, because Redux will be the solution to this problem, but Redux aside for now. These are the features React.js gives you, and these features are not bad. As you see, you can achieve a lot with them. You just have to keep in mind that if you feel kind of worried by the growing complexity of that, that there is a tool to make it simpler again and that I will dive into the tool in the future.